Hello, it's a Cidic Dram, and today is Saturday, July 30th in the year 2022. And uh, here are a list of my achievements for today. Uh, today I completed day number six of week number two of intermediate fasting. And that is, uh, that was from 8 p.m. Friday night, and it went until 3 p.m. this afternoon. So that is, if my math correct, 19.5. And uh, it was it was a dicey one today. Um, okay, so um, what I had to eat today was a little bit more than I usually do. Uh, because uh, it was uh, Amy's birthday today, so happy birthday to Amy! And uh, the um, uh, so the first thing I had, um, I went to uh, I had to go to the pork store this morning and pick up a couple steaks, which I did, and then came home. And then uh, we were getting groceries delivered for you know to make up uh, part of dinner and to uh, you know just for the weekend meals and early week meals. Uh, so, the plan was is to go pick up lunch from uh, McDonald's and uh, did that and got home around 3 o'clock. I had two, uh, two McDoubles, that's uh, four patties, two pieces of cheese, extra pickle, extra onion. So, this is the thing that I, I, talk, I talk about all the time and uh, had a large Diet Coke. I also picked up a large iced coffee. Um, you know, uh, I'm cutting those out soon enough, the Diet Coke and uh, the coffee soon enough as it is, but I want to enjoy them while I can. And um, and then uh, when I got home, I, what did I do when I got home? Okay, then when I got home, I had about two, uh, after I, that's when I got home, I had that. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. All right, so let me think about this for a second. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so then I had like two out two two and a half ounces of uh, cheddar cheese. Then uh, I had I had that. Uh, then I had that. Then I had a string cheese. And then I had a four morsels of uh, dark chocolate uh, Nestle chocolate chips. Uh, made Amy a brownie for uh, a, a keto brownie for afternoon snack. So I had a, so I had a couple, uh, you know, chocolate chips uh, uh, while I was making that. Then didn't have anything else until dinner time. Now this is what impressed me. Um, I got uh, two one-pound dry-aged steaks from the meeting place pork store. And uh, normally when I get a steak, I I devour it and I finish it and I finish my sides. So uh, what I did was I actually I made the steak sous vide, and uh, and uh, I'll post the picture of the uh, the steaks at the end of this video. Um, actually, I'll post a pictures of the steaks now. And uh, so that's what I had for dinner. But the thing that was impressive with me, usually I, I plow through that, eat the whole plate. But I had I only ate half of my dinner because I was full, which is which is good. It's a good sign for me. You know, it means that I'm doing something right because I'm not over, I'm not overeating. I had I stopped when I felt like I needed to stop. I didn't feel like I needed to eat anymore. So I had uh, for dinner was the steak. Uh, gr um, grilled mushrooms, uh, some grilled onions that Amy made previously. She makes the best grilled onions. They're unbelievable. And then uh, also it was mashed broccoli. The mashed broccoli was kind of, uh, it was pretty good actually. It was, um, uh, it was microwavable broccoli. I just threw it in the microwave uh, for a few minutes. And uh, in, uh, in a pan, I, in a small pan, I put about a cup of almond milk, unflavored, unsweetened almond milk. 
and uh, some butter, salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic. Uh, boiled that and let it simmer a little bit until it gets reduced. Then I put the broccoli in there and just cooked it until uh, as much of the uh, liquid was gone. You'll see on the plate that I had that I showed previously that there was a little bit of that liquid left. Um, had that for um, had that for dinner, and again I had half of what was on that plate, so I'm impressed with myself. And then uh, for dessert, usually I don't eat, haven't been eating dessert. Um, if I do, it's usually a Jello cup, and uh, I stopped eating those outside of my uh, start of my fast. I, I when my fast starts, I stop eating. So I had a uh, a cupcake. Uh, I made a uh, a cupcake and uh, a keto cupcake and uh, it was not bad. I had, it was the first time I had one. I made them several times for Amy previously but I, I never did because it's a, you know, because I'm growing up and beginning to learn the value of, uh, you know, of eating, you know, not to, uh, not to eat just to eat and that is a, and that is a thing in my life that I um, like earlier today is kind of like, you know, I, you know, my fasting was from, uh, you know, it was 8 p.m. last night till 3 this afternoon and I wanted a nice coffee. So I missed that. I missed that, uh, that I can get up and go and get a nice coffee whenever I feel like it. And, uh, you know, and it, it feels good that I'm following this, uh, this intermediate fasting because I know it's healthy for me and I know it's good for me. And, it helps prevent extra calories and extra, you know, crap in my system. It allows my, and it's allowing my insides to, um, you know, rest and heal between meals. And, um, and that's something I never did in the past because I was always snack, you know, I mean, I was always snacking and all that, you know, throughout the day. Um, all right, so that was my first achievement, is com uh, completing intermediate fasting and also uh, completing another day of keto. Uh, the only thing that wasn't really keto I ate today was the chocolate chips. Again, there are four morsels, and uh, actually, well, there's also uh, chocolate chips in the in the cupcake too. Uh, I think there were 16, so I ate one serving of uh, 20 of the dark chocolate chips. So that's I'm not gonna kill my I'm not gonna I'm not gonna berate myself for it still an achievement better than I was doing two weeks ago three weeks ago a month ago um, all right then my second achievement is I completed day number six of week number one of accountability elliptical or elliptical accountability um, did one minute in the morning and one minute in the evening and uh, it's getting easier to do so I feel I'm still going to do my minute um, a minute at a time and uh, I'm just going to, I'm going to do that because I don't want to push myself. I don't want to hurt myself. So um, I feel like I could do more. Um, and again, you know, if you see it, a minute doesn't seem like much to you, but it is for me. And, uh, and I keep saying this, but because I believe it, I like, um, like I keep saying is that um, I've, oh, I have such like a perfectionist attitude. It's like, um, so if I can't do 30 minutes on the elliptical, fuck it, I'm not going to do it, you know. Um, that's my attitude. I had this elliptical trainer for over a year, and I used it maybe three times in that last year, but I've used it more this week than I have um, all year. So uh, uh, good for me. I'm proud of myself for these small victories, and I'm accepting these small wins. Small wins lead to bigger wins, and that's the truth because I can feel my body adjusting to, the, um, to that minute, and I feel I'm just a week maybe a couple days away or a week away from feeling that confidence of uh, venturing out and trying to do that uh, second minute um, I may try to do that extra half minute starting on Monday but again I'm not I don't want to overdo it I don't want to hurt myself like I said uh, okay uh, those are my achievements for the day um, actually I'll throw a third achievement in there uh, today uh, normally I don't go into stores um, because you know it's you don't have such a um, and you know such a negative issue or negative issue with myself because you know it's a lot of walking around a store standing in a store plus you know you know avoiding people's judgments or perceived judgments or you know my uh, my um, anxiety keeps me away because I don't want to feel like people are judging me for the size for my size or for what I am so I fought it and you know today is Amy's uh, birthday so I wanted to make it special uh, for her, uh, so I made so I went to the pork store and got some steaks, and uh, made that for dinner. Like I said, 
So I went into the store, and uh, there were a few people ahead of me, so it was taking a while for them to uh, serve uh, to serve me. So um, my leg my legs were really hurting standing for those few minutes, and I was gonna go, but you know I toughed it out and waited there because it was worth it because the steaks were absolutely amazing. They're really great, and so I did that. So I, so that's the third achievement for me. Um, I do want to start um, going to the store and you know uh, getting those extra steps and picking up uh, you know picking up some uh, vegetables and you know meats and stuff so that's that's something I, I don't know if I'm comfortable yet in doing but you know maybe maybe within the next week or so uh, week or so see how it goes um, all right so that's enough for the achievements so things I'm looking forward to this week um, is I have my uh, follow-up appointment with my um, bariatric excuse me with my bariatric surgeon on this Thursday, the 4th. Um, I'm looking forward to that because I like to see where I am. I don't have a scale that can uh, hold my weight, so um, I'd like to see where I'm at. Um, I'm expecting it to be a pretty big uh, a pretty big differential. Uh, like I said, when I on June 16th when I was there, I waited at 547, I believe. I didn't really look at the numbers, but you know I've grown to accept the fact that I am that weight and I'm not going to feel sorry for myself or feel pity for myself or, you know, push myself into a dark hole and uh, feel bad about, you know, you know, being that weight. Yes, I know it's unhealthy. I know I should feel bad about it, but I'm not. I spent years feeling bad about it, so fuck you. Not to you directly, but to the people who are, that would say that to me. So uh, I'm saying fuck you to my negative attitude as well towards myself and my self-pity. Uh, so... You know, I'm not I'm not feeling bad about it anymore because I have the power within me right now to change it, and I'm doing everything that I can at the moment to make small changes in my life, which are turning out to be big changes. Um, like one small change that I made in the beginning was keto. It sucked in the beginning, but guess what? After a few days, and after suffering the keto flu, um, felt better than I've ever felt before. I am not hungry. And it's, I won't lie to you, there are moments during the day I am hungry, but I'm not hungry to the point where I'm going to rip my arm off and eat it or sneak food from a co-worker's desk or root around co-worker's desks and steal food. Not going to do it because I don't have to because I'm not hungry anymore. And I know that I have a plan in place uh, to when I can eat. My plan, as I stated before, is 3 p.m., um, between 3 p.m. and 9 p.m. to eat. So I have a plan. So there's no reason for me to panic. I'm full. I'm, sa I'm satisfied right now. Um, even in the morning, I'm satisfied. So in the afternoon, I don't have to panic. I don't have to drive by a McDonald's on my way into work and feel the need, oh, I need to pick up two sausage egg McMuffins. I don't need to pick up two double cheeseburgers pick up a soda, pick up a small fry. I don't have that anymore because I have a plan in my head and I know that it is 3 p.m. And if I do have to eat something, if I'm that desperate, I know that it's for the right reason where I can do that. But I am trying to avoid, um, you know, I'm trying to avoid the uh, mental hungers and eating the, eating the food out of stress, you know, under stress or out of boredom. So um, that actually helped, like uh, like I said on Thursday night when I was gaming, that used to be a that used to be a, a prime time for snacking for me. I would get a um, you know a tin of ice cream or something else, and I'd have it right there, and I'd be downing sodas like a diet, ah, downing diet cokes or diet Pepsi as a two liter during a gaming session, or you know you know whatever I have, I'd grab a handful of whatever it is and you know devour it during a game session. You know I don't need I didn't need to do that. Um, so that's. So that's one thing I'm learning to deal with is um, avoiding and eliminating the uh, boredom meeting and also the fruitless, um, the fruitless, uh, you know, desserts. For example, um, like Jello cups and whipped cream is fine by me right now. You know, it's 30 calories with the whipped cream. Um, I was doing two Jello cups and. Uh, now I went down to one. I, I don't feel like I need the second one, you know, because quantity is not, you know, I'm still, that's that mentality I have is that um, I have to have more, you know, there's, it's not like I can't go to the refrigerator and grab a second one if I want it, you know, 
Um, so I'm just going to grab what I can and eat it and right, eat it right away. Uh, that mentality actually comes from growing up in a house full of obese people as well. Um, you know, uh, so uh, like in, when I was growing up, food was used as a weapon, basically. And uh, like, for example, uh, my stepdad would, we would get, um, we'd get like ice cream or something. And he would duct tape the ice cream shut you know i mean i don't blame him he's he worked hard for it he worked hard for his money and bought ice cream but you know you don't you know instead of just instead of just saying hey can you leave that ice cream alone for me i I'm, I work hard and i'd like to have a bowl of ice cream at the end of the day uh, so try not to eat more than your share he would actually take duct tape and duct tape the goddamn thing and the only thing that did was you know provoke me and you know get in there and you know try to get it uh, then he'd also, um, and other things too, he'd also do is he'd hide shit in his, uh, his, uh, office cabinet and he'd lock it with a padlock. The, he's an idiot because the desk, the, the cabinet doors that he had, you could just pull out the top drawer and then you still have access to that second drawer. So anyway, it's, he'd always, you know, hide shit like that. So, uh, that's what kind of like gave me the motivation to get a job when I was, uh, you know, early teenager so I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, being provided, you know, decent food um, at, uh, you know, you know, decent food at, um, you know, during the day. It's like, um, so it's basically even like for lunch, there was no plan for me for having lunch. I'd go to, I'd go to school. I would have no lunch money. I would have no lunch pack. You know, my parents didn't uh, provide that for me. Um, so I would, you know, I might be able to swindle, you know, five bucks. I don't know how much lunch tickets cost, five bucks for the week. I don't remember what it was, but, you know, I would have to swindle uh, a few bucks out of them just to, you know, get my lunch. You know, there was no breakfast, you know, at home and, you know, dinner. They always, there was always dinner at home. There was always dinner at night. Um, so that, so when I got my first job, I was like, it was freedom for me because I could eat anything I want whenever I wanted and not to you know I will tell a fat boy a fat boy uh, confession here um, I used to tell I mean I used to you know go to um, you know I mean I was work I worked at McDonald's and and you know I was you know in the, in the, in the, in the late 80s early 90s you didn't get paid that much doing fast food so but you know I worked that's the only reason I, I did the jobs. I didn't really do school. Uh, that's why I kind of like really, uh, I didn't really pay attention to school because when I got a job as earning money, that's the only thing I was really focused on. I wasn't focused on my school um, and uh, school and uh, whatnot uh, or even like friendships and stuff. What I was, and I hate to admit it, but I think the reason why I was working is so I could afford the stuff that my parents weren't providing for me when I was growing up, you know? And I would spend my money as fast as I got it. You know, I'd get paid. I get paid on the fifteenth, and uh, I think we got paid on the fifteenth and the last day of the month. So it turned out to be like every two weeks, or every fifteen days. It sucks, but I used to get that paycheck and it'd be gone. You know, I would have no money. You know, like literally, like three days later, it'd be gone uh, because I, you know, because I had that that mentality if I didn't spend it right away I'm not going to have it I'm not going to be able to have it so um, anyway so there's my here's my confession is that uh, there's times where I would go to um, I would um, like after I'd cash my check I'd actually go back to work and I'd order a, like a McChicken sandwich then I would drive to Hardee's down the street and order a chicken sandwich there and then I'd go to the Dairy Queen and order a chicken sandwich there and I had this mentality it's like oh I'm going to compare these different check chicken salad sandwiches to see which one's better doing a taste test you know I wasn't doing that I was doing that because I was telling that lie to myself trying to make myself feel better but what I was doing is actually and I'd also go to KFC and get their chicken sandwich so I'd get four chicken sandwiches in one day and eat them like probably all within an hour of each other and I would not feel good about myself but you know that's that's what I did and that's um, you know that's that happens that happened to me so that um, that really that that, that sucks. Uh, and another thing is, I remember uh, when I was in it was in the early '90s, and I was doing uh, I was doing theater um, in, at the Des Moines Playhouse, and I would I would work basically the open shift, and it'd be 
uh, like four o'clock in the morning and I'd work like four or five in the morning until the afternoon and then I would go to my rehearsals my rehearsals wouldn't get out until late so like 12 o'clock or so and I would do that I'd work do my rehearsals and then my performances after rehearsals were done and then I'd go back to work in the morning and I remember I was always broke always broke you know I had to I had to take money from my mom for gas and everything and I would never have enough food to eat Mike the um, the thing that I would do is I would I'd have like maybe four or five bucks on me that's it I'd put three dollars in the tank that would get me back and forth to Des Moines at the time and because you know I'd have some residual gas in the in the car and I'd go in and I'd get two uh, two little Debbie uh, nutty bars you know that'd be four bars and you get that for I think at the time they were a quarter each quarter each or uh, 50 cents each or something like that I don't remember but I remember I was able to get two of those and a and a Dr. Pepper not diet Dr. Pepper regular Dr. Pepper and that'd be my meal after working all day having to do performances or uh, performances or rehearsals for four or five uh, four or five hour rehearsals sometimes six hour rehearsals and the two and a half hour the two hour two and a half hour uh, performance and that's what I would eat and then sometimes I would dig around in my car to find that extra penny to get a uh, penny or a quarter or whatever to <clears throat> to get two cheeseburgers from Hardee's on my way home you know and you know I was a manager at the time when I was at uh, McDonald's so I would only eat my manager meal in the morning because I'd be starving as hell and I would eat as much as I could on my manager meal then I would of course after lunch I'd eat my manager meal too and it wasn't it wasn't good you know no wonder I set myself up for such a you know such a lifetime of uh, you know of, of obesity because I'd never really had that plan I didn't have that my whole goal was to you know make money and just fill to. a hole that was within me you know from you know from my you know from you know from uh, past experiences and that was not having enough food so I ate as much as I could I remember when I had my very first job um, and very first job before I worked at McDonald's uh, I remember I got paid and I had like I got paid eighty dollars for a month of work and I remember I walked to uh, Hy-Vee and I bought a can of mushrooms and I bought a thing of mozzarella cheese like a ball of it and uh, I ate that on the way no was it a can of mushroom soup? Oh, it was a can of mushroom soup. And, uh, no, no, can of mushrooms. And, uh, mozzarella cheese. I ate that. Uh, I walked there, I bought it, and I was eating it on my way home, saying I bought this and I could actually afford to eat. And I remember I used to walk into Casey's, uh, down the, on my way home. And remember going in there and saying, at the time, I said, man, I remember I, I used to have to beg my mom to, you know, get me something, you know, like a 50, like a 25 cent candy bar or something. And, uh, she would say no. And, uh, but I remember walking in there and say, I had 50 bucks in my pocket. I can buy anything in that store I want. And I did, you know, and I used to, you know, you know, grab two cookies, grab a, slice, a couple slices of pizza, a six pack of cherry Coke and eat that on the way home. You know, it wasn't great. It wasn't. It wasn't good. It was just a bad, a bad environment for me. Uh, but I'm glad that I am learning that lifetime is uh, that lifetime of experiences of actually being able to look in the dark shadows and the recesses of my behaviors in the past and change them now because some of those behaviors I do reenact. Um, I mean, not recently, but like uh, even as little as uh, you know, like six, like four or five months ago, on the way home from work, I would stop off at Wendy's and get a uh, a meal before dinner because I didn't eat anything when I got up, and I didn't eat anything for lunch, and on my way home I was starving, Marvin. So I got a I got a um, a small uh, I get a meal from Wendy's. And when I get home, I'd eat dinner. So I'd have two big, gigantic meals within an hour of each other. And no wonder I'm here. I starved myself for all that time. And that's not any me yeah, doing intermediate fasting, but that's not the right way to do it because I'm eating a shitload of carbs, a shitload of bad stuff. 
Uh, but now I, I feel like, I mean, I'm, I, again, I'm not saying I'm perfect. And I'm not saying you don't take advice from somebody who's 500, uh, 500, over 500 pounds. You don't take advice from people like that. So, But <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is that uh, for the last month and the last few weeks, I'm seeing results. I'm seeing exam. I'm, I'm, I'm learning. You know, I'm learning. So um, I'm finding inspiration in myself to keep going and, you know, keep in, uh, you know, and keep, keep going and working towards the, you know, working towards the, you know, being a slimmer me. Um, because I miss being active. You know, I miss, you know, I miss uh, hanging out with people. I miss you know, doing social things. It's all because of I trapped myself in my head saying that, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm so fat that I am worthless, I'm a piece of shit, and I don't deserve love or I don't deserve friendship. I don't deserve that stuff. But that's me beating up on myself, being negative. But I see that's bullshit right now. I know it was bullshit before, but I believe it so much because I'm so cynical saying I knew it was bullshit but you know I still live my life that way but now I feel at this moment I feel better about myself because I keep making these changes I'm, I'm moving forward and uh, I'll say it if anyone it can take inspiration from me and you want to follow my path that's great just know that I'm only two steps ahead of where you are from right now and again I don't know everything I am not an expert I'm a 547-pound dude on July on June 16th, trying to be better. And I'm doing better every day. Okay, so that's all I got right now. I mean, there's nothing much more I can really say. This is a 23-minute video. I seem to can't get below that 20-minute mark very often, so um, that's fine. All right. Well, I'm going to do another dramatic eyeglass exchange and peace out. Have a great night. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.